to hear all the discussion and everything that has happened. And now I leave the floor to Greg, who is another organizer of the workshop, who will uh, guide us through the workshop, the tutorials of the last day. That's wonderful. Can I just check? Can you hear me okay? Yes. I, I, that's enough. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, let me also take this opportunity to thank uh, and, uh, and Chiro and, and Apra Tim for um, taking the brunt of the organization for these. As you can see, I'm in a cafe at the moment, um, unfortunately. So hopefully the sound is okay, but please let me know if something goes wrong. Um, uh, so, uh, and it's uh, on the way to our workshop here in London. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm in a cafe. I don't usually take calls from cafes. Uh, okay, yeah, so we had some really nice talks this morning from Sachiro and from Viola. Um, and so the, the, the notebooks today are really uh, focusing on what Sichiro told us about parameter estimation. So we have three notebooks for you today. Um, the first is an introduction to parameter estimation. And what this notebook is going to do is it's going to um, introduce in detail some of the ideas that Sichiro talked about, so stochastic sampling in particular. And in order for us to do that in a way that is sort of um, fast and, you know, you can, can finish quickly on your laptop without taking too many computing resources, what we do is we, we work with a um, sort of toy model uh, of, a, of, a, of a gravitational wave. So it's, it's not sort of physical in any um, real sense. So let me give you a quick overview of this um, and then I'll go on through. So uh, this notebook um, has the usual sort of setup at the start. But it has one additional feature that was actually added only in the last hour. So please pay attention um, just to this bit in case you're going to yeah. hit an issue. Uh, so there's this extra cell um, here, which is uh, effectively downloading a file called, called toymodel.csv. And what that is, is it's a set of test data for you to analyze in this notebook. If you uh, are using the, the notebooks on your own computer, then you will need to pull, uh, do a git pull to, to get the latest version of that. Or you can simply go to the GitHub page and just download it. What you'll find if you don't do this is, is later on you'll see some sort of complaint that this file doesn't exist. So if you just use Colab, then you'll be completely fine as long as you loaded it in the last hour or so. Um, and thanks very much to Anuj, um, who, who was the mentor which spotted this. Uh, last night and, and, and gave us the fix. So uh, yeah, a bit of a last minute coding in there. Okay, so with that resolved, so this just, just downloads that data file. Um, there's some, some text here, which is essentially telling you a little bit in, in, in more detail what Sichiro talked about. So that hopefully is, is gonna be sort of useful to just read over. And then we introduce a, a sort of fake, if you like, signal. Um, so this is, you know, not real gravitational wave data. It's just faked with this sort of funny looking um, sign Gaussian signal in here. And then from this, it, it essentially proceeds to sort of describe the model that we're going to be using, um, and then goes on to uh, how we do parameter estimation. So in this case, we have uh, a model which includes a couple of parameters. Um, they include things like the width of this signal, so it's a sort of pulse, um, and then also the frequency of that pulse. And the, the, the goal of this is really to show you how to do inference of this. Now, often um, parameter estimation is described as a black box and you sort of throw your, your black box and get some posteriors and we've seen examples of posteriors. Well, the hope with this notebook is to give you a peek inside of that black box of what's really going on. Um, and so it introduces uh, the idea of sampling and shows you how to do sampling uh, and then shows you sort of why that's going to be complicated and some of the, um, sort of the difficulties with making it efficient and then we finish up, so we go through sampling and then Markov chain um, Monte Carlo sampling, so it's a sort of improved version of the initial uh, sampler. And then it goes on to use uh, a package called Bilby, which is uh, an LVK piece of software that we use for our gravitational wave posterior estimation, which includes many tricks to make the sampling much more efficient. And so you end up sort of being able to compare these three different, three different methods um, in the end. So that notebook um, is, is gonna have the sort of details, but it's none of the gravitational waves. So the next notebook, uh, so tutorial 3.2, is then moving on to looking at a real gravitational wave event. And so um, if I open this one here, 
Uh, so in this notebook, it's going to actually grab the data for GW150914, so our first binary black hole um, observation, and then it will walk through walk you through some of the sort of technical details of um, of gravitational wave parameter estimation. Um, so sort of uh, things like our spectral density estimation, things that you've sort of heard of before, um, and then how we construct likelihoods and some of the, the technical features of that. And the end result of this is being able to measure the chirp mass and mass ratio for GW15914. Now, one of the things I want to highlight here is that um, uh, if you want to do a sort of full parameter estimation for a binary black hole, uh, it could typically take something like a day of computing on a single core laptop, um, much more if you want to use a, a very involved waveform. And so there's a number of different sort of tricks that have been done in this notebook to make it run in a few minutes. And so as a sort of, you know, go through this today, but keep in mind that this is a rough and ready estimate. Um, so you'll end up with something looking like this, so a measurement of the chirp mass, um, which isn't too bad. Uh, but if you're going to sort of take this notebook and then, you know, maybe you want to develop this into a project, um, do have a think about, you know, what elements, what assumptions have been made to make it fast that you will need to go back and fix. So, so one of the tricks, for example, is we, we fix a number of the parameters. Um, so in here, so we have a non-spinning black hole, for example, this essentially sets the spins of all the black holes to zero. And we know that, that the binary black holes are uh, certainly spinning to some extent. And so that's a bad assumption if you're going to sort of do astrophysics with this. Um, if there's any sort of technical questions on that, please, of course, just uh, uh, put them in, in our stop big one. Okay, and then the final notebook um, kind of looks at the outputs of, of, of parameter estimation. So uh, this is discovering and using published posterior samples. So that's the end result of the, the inference process that Sichiro described. And this shows you how to download the data from the GWASP pages um, and then produce uh, some plots uh, from that. So, uh, for example, this is 150914 again um, and has measurements. Sorry, it's not loading very well on my um, uh, cafe Wi Fi here, um, but it sort of shows you the full measurements that you, you should be able to make. So, that's a useful exercise if you want to sort of take tutorial 3.2 and then scale it up and see if you can reproduce 3.3, but a tough challenge, um, but one maybe for the future. And so I think that's uh, all I wanted to say on those. Um, and so please, yeah, do ask questions in, in our stop big win um, and I'll, I'll pass back to, to Agatha now. Yes, uh, thanks, Greg. Thanks 